Today in lesson three, we're going to talk about linear functions and slope intercept form. First, let's review some of the vocabulary from Algebra 1. We know slope is called the constant rate of change between the vertical distance and the horizontal distance. We often say rise over run is slope. You have a linear function when you have a function whose graph is a line. This is our linear function graph here. And we call the equation that corresponds to the graph a linear equation because it will be an equation in two variables, x and y. And when your equation is written as ax plus by equals a constant, we call this standard form of a linear equation. a, b, and c are going to be constants, and a has to be a number existing it's got to be a positive number. When you're in standard form, the leading term is positive. We know the y-intercept is the point at which the non-vertical line crosses the y-axis. So in this example up here, you see our y-intercept is a negative y-value. And then the x-intercept, that's going to be the point where the non-horizontal line crosses the x-axis. We call the x-intercept the root, the zero, or the solution. That's located right there in our linear graph. And then the famous formula, slope-intercept form, is that special form of a linear equation, y equals mx plus b, where we know m represents the slope of the line, and the b value is the y-coordinate of the ordered pair, that's the y-intercept. So 0b is our y-intercept in that equation. Then just as a friendly reminder, here's our information that we know is slope inter the slope formula. The slope is the vertical change divided by the horizontal change. We say the rise divided by the run. Here's our formula, y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1, and sometimes you can see it written as the change in y divided by the change in x. And this represents our m value in our equation up here for slope. Now, there are four types of slope. There is a positive slope, a negative slope, a zero slope, and an undefined slope. And in each of those cases, the line rises from left to right. So in this case, we would have an equation, a linear equation that would be similar to our slope intercept form. And when the line falls from left to right, then you know that your m value is gonna be a negative value. So we can say here m is positive, and here m is negative. In the zero slope, m is zero. And in the undefined slope, there is no m value, no m value. So the horizontal line is going to be y equals a b number. So this would be 0, comma, b, and this would be some number and b, etc. So every y value on the graph is a b value. And here, this equation would be x equals an a value. So if this value is a0, then this is a in some number y, and this is the opposite of a in some number y. Okay? It's just reviewing the four types of slope. So jumping right into the lesson, we want to know what is the slope of the line that passes through the given points. Using the slope formula, which is y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1, we'll find that the slope is negative 2 divided by positive 1. So our slope is negative 2. Now an interesting question is, can I call this my y2 and this my y1? Will that work out to be the same? 
if we had switched this one, would the answer work out to be the same? And you can experiment with that and find out that the answer yes is true. So let's say, for example, we said 8 is our y2, and we want to subtract negative 4 is our y1. And then we go back to negative 3 is our x2, and we're going to subtract 9 as our x sub 1. So we have 8 minus negative 4, which is 12, and negative 3 minus 9, which is negative 12. So in this case, the slope is negative 1. It might help to turn off the video and work the next two on your own, and then come back to check your work against mine. In this case, we have 6 minus 6 divided by 1 minus negative 5, so the slope turns out to be 0. And just remember that when you have 0 in the numerator and some constant in the denominator, that's okay. That's all right. You get a 0 for a solution. And in Part D, we are going to see undefined where you have 7 minus 8 over 2 minus 2. And we get a number in the top and a zero in the bottom. That is definitely not okay. No, you can't have that. So our slope is undefined in this case. Hopefully you got those okay. So zero in the numerator is fine. Zero in the denominator is an undefined not okay slope. In, part, in example two, we want to know the equation of the line. So we have a y-intercept at 0, 3, and we have a slope that's negative 1 over 2. So you can either move down and right, or you can put the negative on the denominator and move up and left to find additional points. So if we move down and right several times and up and left, several times, we have that graph, linear function, and our equation here would be y equals mx plus b, 3 is our b value, so our equation would be y equals negative 1 half x plus 3. So y equals negative 1 half x plus Three. Didn't give myself much room to write there, did I? Negative one-half x plus three. For part B, the slope is three, so we have y equals mx plus b, and our b value is negative two. We're going to start our graph at zero, negative two, and then rise divided by run is three up and one right, or if you make it a negative divided by a negative, you can go three down and one left. So if we do rise three, run one, rise three, run one, or down three and one left, you have that linear equation graphed. In part C, suppose we have the slope is zero and the y-intercept is four. So when there's no m, you can rewrite that as y equals m x plus b, and b is our y-intercept when the x value is 0. So simplifying that, y equals 4 is the equation of our line, and y equals 4 is constant, a horizontal, 0 slope, right through all the coordinates for 4, 4, 4, 3, 4, 2, 4, 1, 4, 0, 4, negative 1, 4, negative 2, 4, and so on. Moving on to example 3, we want to write equations in slope-intercept form. So how do you write the equation when you're in standard form? And what are the slope and the y-intercept? So that's the purpose of slope-intercept form. If we isolate the 2y by subtracting 3x from both sides and then divide each term by positive 2, we'll be in slope-intercept form. 
y equals m times x plus b. So what is our slope? Negative 1 and a half. And what is our y-intercept? Our y-intercept is the ordered pair 0, 9. Can you do example B by yourself? Isolating the 5y to the right side by subtracting 35 and adding 5y and then dividing each term by 5. We have 5 over 5 is y and 7 over 5 is our slope and 35 divided by 5 is negative 7. So the slope was 7 fifths and the y-intercept is the ordered pair 0, negative 7. Then for our last four examples, we're going to practice graphing. In this case, in example 4, when you isolate the y, we'll end up with y equals 3 fourths x minus 2. So our slope is 3 divided by 4, and our b value is negative 2. Starting the graph at 0, negative 2, with a rise of 3 and a run of 4, we're over here at the point 4, 1. Going backwards, if we fall 3 and go to the left 4, we're over here at the point negative 4, negative 5. And then sketching that linear equation as a graph, we have that. In example 5, isolating y, we're going to end up with y equals 2x minus 3 with a slope of 2 and a b value of negative 3. Again, we're starting on the y-intercept and then have a rise of 2 and a run of 1. So 2 up and 1 right repeatedly or 2 down and 1 left repeatedly. There's our linear equation in a graph. For example, 6, isolating y, we're going to end up with y equals negative 2x plus 1. So y equals negative 2x plus 1 with a slope of negative 2 and a b value of positive 1. We have our graph here and 2 down, 1 right, 2 down, 1 right, or go back to the y-intercept and move 2 up, 1 left, 2 up, 1 left, and we have a line that falls from left to right. Our slope is negative. And finally, the last example, x is negative 2. So x is negative 2 here and here and here and here. All the x's are negative 2. And you can see this is the undefined. There's no m value. So every x value is negative 2. There is no m value, so that means there is no slope. We're a vertical line. And that's the end of Lesson 3 in Chapter 2.